Hey, everybody. This is Christy Furio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. So glad you could join me today. Now, uh, today's episode is brought to you by the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee. Now, the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer is a revolutionary piece of equipment. It is elevating the game of batch brew coffee to a whole nother level. The SCA award-winning technology in this machine is pulling out flavors from your coffee that you never thought possible. And this is so critical right now as uh, much of the coffee world is still focused on to-go coffee. And the experience that your customers have of the batch brew coffee that you serve is so focused on the cup quality. The ground control brewer is really the future of batch brewers. And it's not just a batch brewer either. It can make batch lattes, cold brew, cocoa, tea. It's a very versatile, easy to use, and beautiful to look at piece of equipment. If you're looking to elevate the coffee experience that you offer your guests, then I highly recommend that you look into getting a ground control Cyclops brewer in your store. To find out more information, simply go to their website, Voga Coffee. Dot com. That's V-O-G-A coffee.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Flare Espresso. They are the creators of all manual lever presses that provide you with cafe quality espresso at home for a reasonable price. Um, I started my day with espresso from this machine, and I am just blown away by how simple it is to use how solidly built it is, and the fact that I didn't have to spend a ton of money on it was even better. Uh, the shots of espresso I'm getting, and I've you know spent a long time in coffee, about 20 years uh, behind the bar. This is truly cafe-level espresso, um, just on my counter. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Using this machine uh, is the perfect balance of convenience and ritual, and uh, I love that they're making great espresso accessible to a lot of people. So if you're a professional and you have always wanted espresso at home or you want to offer your customers the opportunity to make your coffee as espresso at home, this is a great option. So right now, Flair is offering 5% discount on your entire order. Just use the code keys to the Flair at checkout when you go to flareespresso.com. Again, that's 5% on your entire order. Use the code keys to the Flair over at flareespresso.com. All right, everybody. So today I wanted to talk to you about work alchemy. Now, alchemy is the uh, mythological practice of turning things like lead or worthless uh, metals and such into gold, uh, finding something that's not very, uh, that doesn't have very much worth and turning it into something that's really worth a lot. Uh, and so I was thinking about this the other day when I was sweeping and I, I just thought to myself, you know, I've developed a lot over the years of 20 years in coffee. I've developed a technique in the way that I sweep. And it is not so much that I was entered into this field of work loving sweeping and thinking, geez, I hope I get a lot of opportunity to sweep. Or lucky for me, if I did think that, I actually have <laughs> hit the jackpot because that's a lot of what I do. Um, and even now when I'm sweeping at home, I, uh, think about my technique of sweeping in the store. And I think, geez, you know, among the community of people who sweep at home, I'm probably like a champion sweeper. And it's kind of a weird thought to me that I would be so, um, not obsessed, but that I would think so deeply about something like sweeping. Um, but what I've noticed is that as you pursue your craft, if you're dedicated to it, you actually can't afford not to get into the minutia and transform it in your own mind from a worthless thing or a drudgery or a distraction or something you hate and turn it into something golden. So turn it into something that has worth to it. And you, especially if you're a leader, have got to learn to love the process. You hear this from a lot of people who give you know motivational talks to entrepreneurs. They talk about loving the process. And I'm not saying that you have to love tax season. I'm not saying that you have to love 
um, you know, just any, you know, every bit of minutia that there is, there's always going to be some resistance there. As you reach for the broom, you say, we'd always rather not. I, I wish our, you know, there was some kind of commercial Roomba that we could use that wasn't going to be <laughs> a tripping hazard in the cafe, because then we totally would do it. But fact is, is that we're always going to have this body of work that is, you know, part of our craft that's not necessarily, it's not directly related to it. You don't necessarily see sweeping as part of uh, barista competitions, for example. It's only like the best bits of, of that work that you see on the stage. But you can't have one really without the other. And so in, in order to not burn out and in order to gain maximum pleasure from our choice of career and then to motivate our staff by example, we need to start thinking about how we can reframe the drudgery, the minutia, into a, a place where it's a bit more uh, where it's a bit more precious where it goes from a, a worthless metal to a precious metal. The first thing I think we could do here is focus on the process. How am I doing this job today versus the next day? Am I improving? Like just try to pick one thing and improve the way you sweep. Improve the way you wipe down the window and just be force yourself to become a little bit more obsessed with doing it better. Because as we mentioned in a shift break, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything. You're always practicing your habits, whether at home or in the store. And so if you can become a little bit more fixated on the small stuff and becoming great at it and, you know, having a few less streaks on the window or leaving a few less um, crumbs on the floor when you sweep or, or getting more efficient at doing those jobs, then you're going to find that translates to how you do things like uh, serve customers. You're going to be more attentive. You're going to be more aware because you're practicing awareness in the everyday tasks. That creates worth in the task because now how you do the dishes is going to have a direct impact on how well you serve a customer or you have a great service recovery during um, you know, a time where maybe you make a mistake on the bar. So that leads me to the second thing, which is you've got to practice thinking how these things are connected instead of siloing everything into, you know, this is the non-coffee related have to do it task. And then this is the coffee task. And this is why so many people avoid going on the register and just want to make coffee on the uh, coffee bar. They would rather just live on the coffee bar because they don't really see the other areas of the cafe as being so related to what they want to do. And as we start to connect them and shorten that gap, we'll start to create a more holistic view of the cafe. We'll find more joy in our work. We'll find more connection. And we'll become better professionals as we become work alchemists, as we transform those things that we thought didn't have any value into things that actually have value. So is it alchemy? I don't know. Maybe it's just cleaning off you know, a layer to find that it was actually gold all along. But either way, <laughs> you get the point. Um, I hope that this episode was helpful for you. These uh, perspectives have just kind of worked their way into the way I view my own work, and I hope that these are things that would help you in yours. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you here next week for another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop. <laughs>